Simon and Simon. Do any of your friends have a history of practical joking? Who in their right mind would think this is funny? How dare you accuse me of shoplifting? I'll sue you. I know this customer from the home. Did you know he had three arms? Anything else happens, I may be dead. Wonder who got mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Monty. I'll exchange it for the right size. Let's see. Oh, here's well, another one addressed to Taylor. Mm hmm. Let's see what this says. It reads to Taylor from a secret admirer. <laughs> Sticking. Watch out, Taylor. It's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been wrapped at our gift wrapping department at Bartlett's. <laughs> Taylor, why don't you use your teeth? Yeah, honey. You're gonna need a lot of practice undoing things. Yeah. Don't say I never gave you anything. Hope it's a grandfather clock.
go. Hold on. Investigations. Who? Mr. Martin? Uh, oh, no, you son of a... Look, that's not... This is business. I'm serious. This is business now. Would you hold on a moment, please, while I kill my brother? Rick! A history of practical joking. Are you serious? I mean, who in their right mind would think this is funny? Well, it depends. I mean, who do you know who isn't in his right mind? I have a uh, very caps here. The nitro's been hollowed out. There's nothing here that can blow up. Does your uh, fiance have any old boyfriends who uh, might not like the idea that she chose you? Not that I know of. Uh, things are rather delicate with the family. See, Valerie's father is Mike Bartlett of Bartlett's department store. Uh-huh. So you're marrying into the family business. I am in line for promotion, yes. But it's not what you think. I deserve it. I mean, I've been working at Bartlett's ever since I graduated from college. It wasn't until a year ago that Valerie and I fell in love. Well, okay, hey, all I meant was, you know... You can land the boss's daughter more power to you? I didn't land her. I didn't plan this. It just um, happened. Mr. Martin, I really don't think you're in any danger here. I mean, this is just a practical joke. It's not very funny, but that's all it is. Yeah, it is. A couple of people decide to get married. All their friends and relatives got to pull out their joy buzzers. I'll uh, read the card. Bye bye, Taylor. You're dead. That, that's no joke. Well, if you feel that way about it, you better call the cops. Well, you, you don't understand. See, Valerie's father is a very important man in this town. He only wants to read about our wedding in the society pages. That, that's how come I came to you. Okay, I'll tell you what. Before we take any of your money, why don't you take this? Anything else happens, give it. I think we handle that pretty well, don't you? Close the door. You said I should call you. I need this call upon us. Did it go off? No, um, I think the string was too loose to pull the trigger. You know, it was just uh, too loose, too much. Too much slack in it? 
Right. <laughs> Who are you calling? Even the cute note. Okay. Now we will try to keep the police out of this as long as possible. In the meantime, let us concentrate on finding your secret admirer. Who's got a key to this room besides you? Uh, the janitor. Security. Mike Bartlett, he has a key to everything. Um, I don't know who else. And this thing is a piece of cake to get into if you know what you're doing. What, through the whole store? I mean, you have to go past security, the cameras, and everything? I mean, it'd have to be someone who knew the store awfully well. Well, it was known. Uh, the other day, you couldn't come up with any enemies. What about friends? Well, most of my friends are the people who work at the store. Mm. Okay, well, uh, who's your best man, for instance? Gary Murka. He's the head of the radio and TV, but he wouldn't think this is funny. Hello? Ah, uh, thank you. Um, Mike Bartlett's coming in. That's Valerie's father. I can't let him know that you two are private investigators. Okay, uh, tell me somebody who that you invited to the wedding who can't make it. I mean, somebody that your father-in-law wouldn't know. Um, Brian Cody, my old college roommate. Uh, he couldn't come. He's, he's supposed to be in Europe. I'm Brian Cody. Who's he? New security man. Taylor, I... Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh... I just needed your count through the caterer, but I can get it later. Oh, no, come in, please. I was just talking with... Hank. Friar. Hi. Hank. Here, uh, about this... Shotgun. Somebody left it on the display case down in Sporting Goods. I was just bringing it to Mr. Martin's attention. Hank's a new man. With, the uh, Security. Security. Ah. So... Thank you, Hank. Uh, just leave the gun here, and I'll take care of it. Ah, uh, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, and this is Brian Cody, my college roommate. He was able to come after all. Brian, Mike Bartlett. Nice to meet you. Glad you could make it. Uh, I thought you were in Europe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this man has a memory you wouldn't believe. Well, I'm afraid the reports of my traveling have been greatly exaggerated. I'm not going to be able to make it to Europe till next month. Unfortunate. Uh, bring your friend around tomorrow. We'll play some doubles. Oh, I'd love to. Uh, sorry, tomorrow's a red tag sale. Oh, it'll be singles then. A couple of good sets and a drink. Uh... You can fill me in on Taylor's checkered past. You're on. Don't worry. I won't tell him about the panty raid on the Sigma Tall House. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a fraternity. Uh, it was a very no, embarrassing not moment anymore. for us, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, see you later, Mr. Cody. Uh, nice Taylor. to meet you. Gotta be careful with him. He doesn't miss anything. In that case, I think you better call personnel and have them put Hank Fryer on the payroll. You're right. And then you better fill me in on what you were, excuse me, what we were like back in college. Sensitive D O G. You understand? Now watch. All right, Toodles. Go ahead. Go on now. Eat. Eat. You see? And it can't be the food. Toodles loves his prime sirloin a la can. So it must be the dish.
Mr. Fryer. Ah, yeah, Frank Fryer. Nick Bates, head of security. Nice to meet you. Glad to have you with us. Well, it's good to be here. Come on, I'll show you the store. And you can uh, fill me in on your background. Uh, Look around you, Hank. What do you see? Okay, um... Beds. Customers. First mistake. Clientele. Clientele. Okay. Lifeblood of any store. And, unfortunately, the bane of our existence. Uh, we being the security force. That's right. Inside this world of fantasy and wish fulfillment, you'd hardly believe we're fighting a war, would you? No. Never we are. Every day a war is waged in these aisles. Every single day. Any survivors? More than I'd like to admit. The reason we're fighting a war, Hank, is that one out of every ten people who walk through our doors is a shopper. One out of every ten. <laughs> the campus cops used to take pictures of students involved in what they called countercurricular activities. They had his backside up on a bulletin board for three weeks. It was never identified. <laughs> Well, I knew he had a wild card. He just never lets it out. Uh, not me. Uh, uh That story is just a figment of Brian's imagination. Sure it is. <laughs> well, I want to hear more. You will. <laughs> See you at lunch, sweetie. <laughs> hey, why don't you join us, Brian? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Great. See you then. <laughs> now, I'm not here. <laughs> See what I mean? I think for my wedding present... We got a streak through the store, don't you? Good idea. <laughs> Look, don't make me too wild. I'm not like that. And besides, nobody will believe you anyway. I'll blow your cover. Excuse me. I'm with store security. You want to give me the cassette player and whatever else you've got under that coat of yours? I, I beg your pardon? You took a cassette player from that table over there. I did what? You heard me. Would you open your coat, please? I will not open my coat. Who do you think you are, anyway? I'm a valued customer at this store. How dare you accuse me of shoplifting? I'll sue you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll sue you for false arrest. What's going on I here? I can tell you that this will be the last time Are I ever shop Are you the new man here, again. Friar? Yes. I hope you know what you're doing, Friar. Suddenly says, girls, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm not French, I'm not a tennis player, and I don't need a place to stay. Then he turns to me and says, au revoir, Claude. <laughs> that is a friend. <laughs> I'm so glad to finally meet you. Well, thank you, I'm glad to meet you too. Hey, it's not too late, you know. You could still change your mind. It could be an Acapulco a happy hour. Your being here is going to be so good for him. He's been under a lot of strain. 
and uh, getting married will do that to you. You ought to know that. Me? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? I've never been married. Why are you relieved? Well, the person that I was thinking of, Barbara, her former husband, Bob, he's just the sort of person who might do that, you know, that dynamite joke. Well, no one I know. You know, jealous former lovers. Besides that, my last boyfriend is married and has a family now. Taylor's been the only man I've been involved with for more than a year. I want to marry him more than anything else in the world. And I know that that uh, joke has really freaked him out. If you could just uh, be with him and talk to him, maybe. Well, I know he trusts you. How can you be so sure? Because I trust you. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Well, well, well. I hope you haven't been making... I don't know when I've had such a workout. Oh, oh, come on, Brian. You're just being easy on an old man. You could have taken oh. me any time. Oh, no way. Well, let's get a drink of glass. Oh. Boy, you've got a beautiful place here. Large, too. You must raise a big family here. <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? There's room for one, but Valerie's all I have. Oh, I had a son, but he passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. You're about to add another son to your family. To tell you the truth, Brian, that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you alone. I don't think I can ever feel like Taylor's my son. Why? I don't know. Instinct? I don't like him. It's going to be rough on all of you. Maybe so. A man can't change his feelings. Well, I don't think it's unusual for father to resent having his little girl taken away from him. No one's taking you away. I am not a possessive father. Just cautious. Is there any room there for trust? Plenty. Trust for my own instincts. Sir, I think you're feeling a little panicky. I mean, I think your instincts are telling you not to give the bride away. At any cost. Valued friends here. feel the way I do right now.
don't get it. Nobody forced the lock on the door. Nobody broke in through the windows. When could this have happened? Sometime today. And from the time I left this morning until after I dropped Valerie off this afternoon. I had to be somebody with a key. One of your neighbors have a key? Okay, um, old girlfriend, former owner. Friend who stayed with you once, maybe? Well, damn it, man, it has to be somebody. I mean, do you ever lose the keys? Uh, leave them somewhere for a couple of days? Was the house ever robbed? Anything? Looks like something was written on the mirror in there. What did it say? Catch you next time, Taylor. Well, even that doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you really wanted to catch her, you would have waited right. Hey, I was gonna say her father. I was gonna say her father. My jeez. chance to thank you the other day for nailing that shoplifter. If you knew how much my department loses in stolen goods every year, no it problem. It'll knock no your problem. socks off. I was just happy to do something right the first day, you know, especially after Mr. Martin got me this job. Could I get some coffee, please? I didn't know you knew Taylor. Oh, sure. We go way back. Just uh, casual acquaintances, of course, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Me. I'm the best man. Is that so? Congratulations. Besides, Taylor's always been a little skittish. What do you mean? You know him. Paranoid. Oh, yeah. But not serious. Nothing serious. Um, did he tell you about the time he thought somebody was getting inside his house? No. Moving things around. Not stealing anything, just moving <laughs> things around. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody's been watching Taylor that I made the Camaro. She's driving it. Huh. Taylor? It, I can't yeah, hear it. Let me uh, have the keys to Liz's car. I'll find it. You're talking about falling in this. No, 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 no. If he's been in the house and he's seen the truck. Now, come on, just. Come on. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Taylor really think you could hire this bum to trap me down? <laughs> uh, now the question is, what are we going to do with him? steal all his clothes or just the hats? I would imagine just the hats. Especially after you knocked me out and tried to make a submarine out of my car. Uh, what happened to the car? I told you, I went in the water. You didn't say you went in in the car. Nick! What happened to Liz's car, AJ, Rick? AJ, I'm a little busy here. Uh, now, look. Since I don't think you make it a habit of trying to kill every stranger you meet, I want to know why you tried to do it with me. I like your nose job. You want to try for a little dental work? Hey, stop it, huh? Leave him alone. Ah. Well, now that we've got your attention. You know the guy in this picture? No. Go for the dental work. Yes! Yes, I know it. All right, what's his name? Slack. His full name? Reynolds. Slack Reynolds. Does he come here often? Off and on. Well, what do you know about him? Not a whole lot. What does he do for a living? Where does he live? What can you tell us? I can tell you that he's pretty wild. I like him pretty wild. Well, like at Clydesdale over here, hey, huh? it's my brother. Ah. Well, I would guess that your brother is now facing a charge of attempted homicide. That is, unless you care to tell us what you know about this slack. I don't know anything about him. <sighs> he doesn't let loose about himself. He likes to talk, but not about himself. <sighs> I did meet his mother once. Whoa! Absolutely, Liz. The car was a lifesaver. Sure. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Rick's uh, getting it washed right now. Oh, uh, no, darling. I think uh, I, I might need it tomorrow. Why don't... Uh, why don't I just hang on to it for a couple of days and uh, you drive to Camaro? That's her. Thank you. Mrs. Martin? Well, you don't have to scare me. I'm an old woman, you know. Where did you get that shiner? Somebody hit me. They did. Did you hit him back? Eventually. Good for you. 
That's the trouble with most men nowadays. They don't know how to use their fists. Not like in the old days. Yes, um... We came to talk to you about your son. What's there to talk about? He's a spineless piece of jelly. He has been since the day he was born. Slack? I don't have a son named Slack. Well, we were told that you did. We were told that he comes to visit you, brings his girlfriend. No, mm, no, thank you. Uh, you do have a son, though. Taylor. All right. Um, let's talk about Taylor. We think he's in trouble and he may need your help. My help? I wonder why. Taylor's down well for himself, from what I hear. Who do you hear it from? Does Taylor come to visit you? No, no, Taylor never comes to visit me, never. Are you proud of him? I mean, he's done quite well for himself. <laughs> I'm more surprised than proud. Taylor had a lot to overcome. His father didn't like him very much. He always said, the wrong one died. The wrong one? Taylor had a brother? Taylor was one of two, you didn't know that? Twins, boys. One died and one didn't. Taylor survived. The meek one survived. The one who didn't want to cause anybody any trouble. His father couldn't stand him. Did, um... Did Mr. Martin beat him? Mr. Martin beat me. He beat both of us. <laughs> if, um, if Taylor had just stood up to him once, just once, maybe things would have been different. What did Taylor do, run away? No, no, he never did. He had a, an active imagination. That's what he used to escape. I used to catch him sometimes, pretending he was somebody else. It was like he really was somebody else. His brother? Was this after his brother died? Did his brother have a nickname? His father gave it to him. That's who comes to see me these days. Not Taylor. Slack. Taylor's dad used to hit him. It's just a guess. Rick? Come on, Rick, talk to me. You ever remember dad spanking you? Hitting you, I mean, even if you deserved it? No, he never laid a hand on me.
of times, though, especially right after Dad and I have a fight, I used to wish I were you. Instead of me. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I thought it wasn't your fault. I don't know. I'm just... I'm sorry. I tried to warn you, Taylor. I tried to scare you away from this wedding, but you're determined to go through with it, aren't you? Well, you see, I can't let that happen, because eventually she'd find out about me, and she'd try to get rid of me. Even I can't fight the fact that the two of you are in love. Your love would destroy me, Taylor. Valerie's love would destroy me. So... The only solution is to get rid of her. As long as Saber is going to kill her, he just doesn't know it. Hello, Mr. Bartlett? Dang it, you better talk to him. Uh, hi, Mr. Bartlett, uh, it's Brian Cody. Yeah, fine, how are you? Uh, is Valerie there? Uh, she's out with Taylor? Do you know where they went? Okay, no, th no there's no problem. Right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You're so quiet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Not me, baby. You must be thinking of Taylor. I can't let Taylor marry you. Taylor, what's going on? Tonight. It's over, Slack. We've got you on tape. We'll do a voice print. Cure, maybe. 
Cure me. Bye bye, slack. I don't have the brand at all. Here. Now. Okay, you can give us a knife. Now we're your friend. I don't have any friend. What about Brian? Brian's your friend. Brian doesn't exist. Made him up. I made up everything. Well, what about us? We're your friends. You didn't make us up. And Valerie. Make her up. She loves you. Thank you. 